Welcome viewers uh, to another episode where I am discussing uh, a very important topic uh, that is the MRO and it's uh, the emerging technologies of MRO and how they are going to impact uh, on the MRO. So I have with me a very, very special guest. He is a uh, Lieutenant General Dr. TSA Narayan and he and I go back a long time yeah, doing our service. I thought uh, it will be wonderful to talk to him on this subject, and I'm grateful that he's accepted my invitation. Thank you, sir. So, TSA, can you please uh, tell me what do you feel is emerging in MRO, and how is it going to sort of impact on what uh, we, we, the way we do our MRO nowadays? So, the emerging technology uh, which uh, we can discuss today are basically, you know, uh, AI and data based. Then we can discuss IoT, the digital twin the augmented reality the virtual reality 3d printing advanced robotics all these which are the latest emerging technologies which are being used by the industries are going to have a big say in our mro as such and they are make, going to make our life much much easier in ensuring that the uh, maintenance or even the repair or overall or whatever it is is effective and uh, not only really effective it is efficient effective and at a reduced cost that is the thing will be. Now, if I uh, talk about, uh, we all uh, talk about predictive maintenance as such. I mean, there's a lot of research going on in predictive maintenance. What is it? It is basically a data-driven approach to anticipate what is the potential failure is going to be. So it uses a lot of sensors. It uses data analytics. And of course, the historical purpose startup is also goes into it. And what does it do? It basically focus on probabilistic failure prediction. So basically it's a prediction which whether it's going to fail or not fail. So what is the aim? Aim is to uh, prevent unexpected breakdown as such. And it totally relies on condition monitoring and, monitoring and trend analysis. So it's basically looking at what is going to happen and based on the data which is going to analyze the data. And it uses uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence in a big way as such. So the new uh, thing which is coming up is called the prescriptive maintenance. Now, what is prescriptive maintenance? It is actually an uh, approach which will go beyond prediction. When I say beyond prediction, it will give us, other than the prediction, it will give us the specific actionable recommendations. And it will give precise intervention to prevent failure. And it will consider even the performance optimization, operational context, cost, everything. And if I want to see what is the key difference between predictive and uh, prescriptive maintenance is predictive focus on what might happen and prescriptive will answer what should we do. So that is a major difference. So prescriptive, I will say, take uh, maintenance takes predictive maintenance a step further. While predictive maintenance forecast potential issues, prescriptive maintenance provides actionable recommendation how to prevent or mitigate these failures. It relies on advanced analytics, AI, machine learning, and analyzes the data, of course, it is there. So what are the key I mean, features of prescriptive maintenance? One is it's a data-driven set. I mean, it analyzes data from various senses. Same goes for predictive is that it, this also does. And maintenance history, everything. But what it does more is it looks into the root cause analysis, which predictive does not do. It goes beyond identifying potential failures by pinpointing the causes and prescribe some remedies. It allows you to make automated decision making because it, uh, it integrates with IoT and AI to automate corrective actions in real time. And you can actually generate scenarios to predict the outcome of various intervention as such. So the biggest advantage of prescriptive maintenance is first, it analyzes historical and real-time data, diagnose the root cause of issue, and recommend specific action to mitigate or prevent failure. Sometimes even it can give automated decisions like shutting down a machine to prevent catastrophic failure. So it not only predicts failure, but also prescribes actionable solution. So how do I look at it? I can say the preventive maintenance, which used to be the uh, butter of EME, the preventive maintenance, the predictive maintenance, and the maintenance manual 
plus AI plus data contribute to the foundation of prescriptive maintenance. So it has got additional layers also to give those actionable recommendations. So this is what is going to be the advance. So today everyone is doing predictive. Tomorrow everyone is going to do prescriptive as such. So anything more in this you would like to know, sir? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's very that is uh, you give a lot of uh, very important points. So what comes to mind is let's say this is now the future is almost upon us and we are entering it. So how do organizations, uh, which are large organizations, uh, you know, become future ready? How do they absorb this? Because this still involves so many things to do to be able to utilize what is uh, available now and to become more effective and efficient, as you're saying. Absolutely. So we actually, I mean, if you let, look at Indian Army, I mean, we are not even predictive maintenance ready. Why I say that is our only the latest equipment have, otherwise most of the legacy equipment is generally 70%. We do not have sensors in them to take in order data. So, and uh, how much it is going to be cost and time prohibitive to, you know, put sensors in all the equipment which Indian Army has got as such. Now, I mean, I'll just give an example of a, a T90 to differentiate between a predictive and a prescriptive side. So, when in a predictive maintenance, the, if the problem is that why uh, you put sensors, for predictive also you have to put sensors. So say you have put sensors in for T90 in various places. So when the problem detected say is a vibration sensor detects an unusual increase in oscillations, that is the vibration increases, and temperature sensor also indicate overheating in the gearbox. So predictive maintenance is going to say that based on this condition, it could say that the gearbox failure could happen in the next 50 hours or 40 hours operating hours. Now, but let's come to the prescriptive uh, maintenance as such. What does it say? Same problem detected, that vibration is there and overheating is there. So it will indicate to, then it will tell you that there is a problem, there could be a problem with the clutch plate. The gearbox oil might have got degraded due to this excess heat. So it's going to tell you to check all these things. Gear shifting may be delayed under load. Could be any reason. So it is going to then tell you that replace the clutch plates if that bad, flush the and replace the uh, degraded oil as such, and inspect the hydraulic actuators and valve block for clogging or pressure drop. So not only tells you that it might fail, it is giving you a solution, and it is going to it is telling you take effective remedial action now to ensure that such a failure does not uh, take place. And if, uh, I mean, if I could take a, say a radar system as such, again, there's a, a transmit receive modules in a radar system, everyone has, knows about it, sir. There also cooling sensors could be put. So, so if you come to know that there's a increase in temperature in that, and there's a power supply sensors if you put, and there's a fluctuating voltage difference, the predictive analysis can indicate that this overheating could uh, make TR module degrade in next 50 to 100 operation hours. It will tell you how much operation hours is left. And it will say that unstable voltage might lead to power unit failure. The prescriptive maintenance in this whole thing will uh, tell you same overheating will be there and uh, signal output show anomaly. The two detection which was that problems, same problem. But here, it will, it will tell you that the cooling system, please flush the coolant, replace it, replace the faulty capacitor in the power supply unit, inspection, recalibrate the phase shifter. So these kind of problem uh, solutions it will provide, which if you take action, otherwise what we used to do, predictive maintenance used to tell us this problem is there. The, Sensor will tell you that this thing, it could tell you this much, but what are the root cause for the root cause? You used to go to the maintenance manual. The technician, he was very good, he knew what to do. Otherwise, he had to go to the maintenance manual. Here, the maintenance manual is part of the prescriptive maintenance. So the computer itself is going to tell you what to do. So how do we ensure that, you know, all these system come into the army? So any future procurement has to have various sensors to monitor what all we have to monitor. So once the sensors is already fitted by the OEM 
and this equipment are procured, then predictive and prescriptive maintenance could be used in without any worry. Even today, a project can be taken up, but the only problem is the amount of data required. Actually, today, uh, the data which is available with us of the legacy equipment or of the current equipment, we can't say that the data is pure, sir. It's clean. That is the biggest problem. So they're all going to give you wrong results. So unless when the equipment is injected, the sensors are fitted on that, and the data is automatic captured, then this over a period of time, we can develop these kind of software. I mean, predictive maintenance, prescriptive maintenance could be developed as such. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so now, you know, coming into this, because nowadays AI is really being talked about so much. So can you go a little deeper into how AI can help us in this overall, whatever you mentioned? Sir, that, that is, uh, like I told you how these uh, sensors are fitted. Now, uh, I take vibration sensors output, so it will be in uh, lakhs data. I take the reading of the temperature. Then I take pressure reading. So finally, I will get a statistical curve on this. Now, I know from my equipment that what are the tolerance level? So once I know the, I know the tolerance level, so my program will be such that you know, if you look at the trend analysis, suppose the temperature variation is increasing as per kilometer, let us say, or hours reading. The temperature of a, say, let's say we take a tank new engine, and uh, generally it operates at a temperature between 95 to 105 degree. So the coolant temperature varies in that. As the engine becomes older and older, the temperature keeps on increasing. It goes up to 110, 115. And above 120, you are not supposed to run it. Correct, sir? So now, if I over a period of time, if I plot it, plot these, I will get a graph, which is a which may be linear, may not be linear. But I know that the trend is there, that as the engine hours is increasing, the temperature is also increasing. That trend is there. So I'm giving a very simple method of calculating this, I'm telling you. So just this temperature, I will, can predict that in how many hours it can reach 120. In how many hours more the operation, it can reach 120. I can predict that. From there, I can tell you how it, it is not so simple the way I am saying it, so that people can understand I'm making it so that simple as So this is how you can use AI to ensure that you know you can predict a failure and for which the biggest problem which we require is data. Today, if I if if, if we want to say we fit sensors in a regiment's uh, say tank, because each Tank has got a different way. You cannot apply the same yardstick of one tank to another tank. I mean, when I say hey, its behavior is different. So even if I put, I'm able to generate, I'm able to put so many sensors in the tank. My problem is how much I'm allowed to run them during peace time to get the data. And then put AI model into that and get my prediction. We, we, are, we tried in MCME, but we had only one tool answers. So he could give us only one or two tank, and he says that this is my restriction of mileage. So you run in that. So we could manage something, but of course, it is not an effective solution. I mean, it was I could not have said that, yes, this is the best solution available. The data was the main issue for which you know we were suffering actually. Then I mean, when I uh, was talking about uh, so many things, the I, I mean, when I say the sensors, sir, IoT is one of the sensors, that is Internet of Things. You are aware about that. So it IoT enabled sensors will actually allow you to monitor the equipment health as such, and so that you are uh, you don't have to rely on reactive or even scheduled maintenance in which say it's a preventive maintenance. So you are transacting from reactive to predictive and prescriptive maintenance if you use IoT. Second thing is which I will speak also IoT is required for digital twins. It will enable the creation of digital twins. Basically, what is the digital? Making virtual replica of physical assets. So IoT will continuously uh, sync real-world data with a digital twin. And the MRO team, who are the technicians, can simulate test scenarios, you know, predict failures, and optimize maintenance plan. The IoT will biggest uh, advantage will come in inventory management as such. 
the smart sensors iot's they can track parts tools in real time ensuring availability without overstocking and not only that they can trigger automated reordering when parts reach critical stock level of course equipment life cycle management will get enhanced because it will provide a detailed insights into the entire life cycle of the equipment it will also give you the historical and real time data which will predict which will help you to predict optimal repair and replacement times iot will also ensure compliance with life cycle maintenance schedules as such the beauty of iot is that it can be augmented through ar that is augmented reality and iot integration which i am talking about so iot can pair up with augmented reality to empower mro a technician as such uh, this iot data if you overlay on an ar device the smart glasses which are all available can guide uh, technicians step, step by step we had developed a t90 engine uh, augmented reality sir with the help of sgd in mcme it is still there you put on a glasses you uh, the engine wherever if you are looking at the real engine now so wherever the parts are there the parts come in your glasses only the name of the part everything details of that description everything come so a technician today you can give a br engine to a technician but you have to give a guide also to explain to him what is which part here you don't require a guard a guide you give him just a br engine he puts on the glasses the software is already there so it explain it will now explain each part of the engine so this is going to help the technician in a big way augmented reality as such so this iit iot data overload on ar will guide the technician step by step and this real time data can also be taken and will provide precise diagnostic and repair another biggest advantage of iot will be the remote monitoring which we don't have now especially in uh, communication equipment electronic uh, equipment all so it can provide you remote monitoring of equipment via iot devices so that you can get the expert to guide you now the basic technician is on the field with the iot and the ar the same and the expert is somewhere in the center he can now guide the technician what to do so these are the beautiful advantage of uh, the emerging technology sir which will help us in mro operation as such thank you very much uh, jalan and that was absolutely fascinating listening to you and viewers with that i on your behalf also thank him for being part of this particular episode and uh, i look forward to bringing uh, more such episodes uh, to you from our channel jai hind